Also, what I'm being requested to do is to um, provide nutritional facts or nutrition facts about crops grown in the garden, which is really amazing because that is what I was going to do anyway. I really was going to do that. I was just waiting on the crops to develop first before coming up with the content. People definitely love my gardening tips and tricks. Like in the past month, people have been paying way more attention to my short videos on how to grow certain crops. Like the the favorite ones so far have been my tips on growing sugar snap peas. Or, well, actually it's tied both sugar snap peas and my video on beans, on growing beans. So it's, um, and by the way, it's because growing beans is beneficial is because it releases nitrogen into the ground. So that's like another video, you know, uh, like, well, actually I'll go over it. Crops rely on multiple nutrients to grow, but the three main ones are nitrogen, potassium, and phosphate. Phosphate is vital for plant growth. Like almost kind of like what zinc is for the baby, or I should say folate. Um, without phosphate, your plants do not grow <laughs> pretty much. It don't, it doesn't grow. When I cleared out that entire plot, I let it air out for like 24 hours and I gave it some topsoil. But what I failed to do was replenish the entire plot of more nutrients. So even though all of my crops sprouted, I noticed it was extremely slow growing. I gave it its first rounds of three different organic fertilize, uh, fertilizers and boom. I noticed that my plants have been growing fast ever since. Gave it more fertilizer yesterday again because it is extremely important to keep feeding your crops, especially tomatoes, especially, especially tomatoes. Now, the potassium is vital for the plant's ability to intake the water and nutrient distribution. Without potassium, that is how you start to see your plants yellow at the bottom. You start seeing the veins and the leaves and also the production of fruit. Your crop yield will also be very, very minimal without potassium. Now the nitrogen, um, this is what's really vital for leaf development. It is like the major component of chlorophyll, which is what gives the plants their green color. It is also the component of that plants use to take in that sunlight energy and promote photosynthesis. You know, nitrogen is actually the most important out of that three I just named because without strong and proper leaf growth, the plant can't use the sunlight to grow and produce properly. So basically the plant won't survive it without it at all, like at all. No ifs, ands, or buts. So beans release nitrogen into the soil. And I actually found out recently that it's actually the entire, pretty much the legume family. So sugar snap peas also release nitrogen into the soil. But beans are really the most popular plant to grow because they are known to release nitrogen in the soil. So this is really what's the what the benefit is of being able to grow in a raised garden bed instead of just in a pot. I've planted quite a few bean plants and they all sprouted. And ever since they sprouted, my garden has absolutely thrived since. This was also around the same time I fertilized my 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 plot as well. So that could have something to do with it as well. But Ever since my beans have sprouted, my garden has just absolutely thrived. Now I'm still waiting to grind up the eggshells to spread across the garden because eggshells also contain a lot of nutrients, particularly calcium. And so, yeah, plants love that, especially my tomatoes, but those bean plants releasing nitrogen into the soil is huge. I planted those beans smack dab in the middle of my four by 20 plot. All four of my kale plants happen to be right next to the beans. They have been growing like crazy ever since those beans sprouted. Matter of fact, 
they have just thrived. I, I, like you have to be very careful though, because you have to make sure those nutrients are balanced. That's what I kind of, you know, got stuck on because I was like, wait a minute, let me just take it back a little bit. You have to make sure that it's balanced all across. For an example, if you have too much nitrogen and not enough potassium, your plant is going to have a whole thing full of leaves and hardly any fruit production. <laughs> so everyone has their preference as to what type of plant food they use. Most prefer, prefer in a liquid form. I prefer the slow releasing fertilizer every other week because I noticed that with the liquid fertilizer, I have to supply the plants way more often and it has to be the perfect balance of solution with water. With the slow releasing fertilizer, I could just lightly spread throughout the plot and keep watering. It just works best for me. I mean, no, I'll, I'll eventually use the liquid fertilizer, especially on my tomato plants, but for now, this is just what works. <laughs>